Hello there, my friends. Chris Marcus here with you for Arcadia Economics on Wednesday, April 14th, which I'm darn excited about because I think it's a special day in gold and silver history. I'm not going to tell you exactly why yet, but a great reason to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell and see what surprises may be coming later on. Um, of course, this is ahead of next Tuesday, April 20th, our peaceful CFTC Expose the Fraud and Corruption Rally will be down live in Washington, D.C., right outside of the CFTC's headquarters, making signs. And uh, Marco, I'm also going to offer people on the street their choice of a, an ounce of silver or a Snickers bar. Um, how many How many do you think I'll have to get to before someone outside of someone who watches the show? If we went around Congress, how, if I offered 100 congressmen an ounce of silver or a Snickers bar, what, what do you think the results would be, sir? I, I'll, I'll, I'll take the silver, <laughs> silver bar any day. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I, I think you'd, I, I would like to know how many of them wouldn't, wouldn't have to stop at Costco for another reload on the Snickers before it is all said and done. Although, where are my manners? Marco Rock, pleasure to welcome you back on in for the last couple months. You were a sponsor to the show for a while, which I certainly am grateful for. It was nice to catch up with you at a conference, uh, I guess it was two or three weeks ago, and hear that things have really gone quite well. So uh, full disclosure, I'd like to add, there's no sponsorship of today's episode or anything like that, but we really just wanted to have you back on because, uh, you know, I understand there's a lot of conflicts of interest in today's financial world, but whether it comes across or is clear or not, any of the companies we bring on, I don't have a crystal ball, but I check with as much as possible, do my due diligence, talk with people who know the management. And uh, I was just really excited to see that you guys have done really well since then. You've followed through on what you promised and what you said you would be doing. And uh, we'll look forward to digging into that as well today. So it's great to have you back on here. And uh, I won't tease the audience anymore because obviously, you know, I, I'm sure there's a, like a few people in the world, not on Wall Street, but saw that consumer prices, this was yesterday, rise more than expected. <laughs> well, I don't know who set the expectation on that one. But pushed by 9.1% jump in gasoline, <clears throat> which is odd. I thought they don't even count that in the CPI anyway. But Margo, it looks like the uh, annualized, we're now up to 2.5% on the uh, government and the numbers that the Federal Reserve looks at, their fraudulent statistics. But maybe we'll start simple here. I know the Fed talks about their 2% mandate. Is 2.5, 2 is it bigger than two? I went to a government school, so let's start there uh, for all the Americans watching today. Well, uh, yeah, the way I see it, 2.5 is clearly above two. Uh, and I, I'm, not, I don't even, I don't, I'm not even sure if it includes the, um, uh, the energy prices uh, on that estimate, I think. Uh, so, and, and, and uh, and just just on top of that, I'm just looking at my my screen right now, and I see WTI is just up uh, almost five percent today. Uh, hmm. So you know, if you feel if you feel a gasoline is, is getting more expensive, um, I think it's you know uh, <laughs> it's uh, it, it's going to feel uh, you're going to feel a lot more expensive in in a, in a week or two. Yeah, well, this is interesting. These. Uh... This is the March figures, and let's see, as Marco quite astutely pointed out, we see gas, uh, oil crude futures up uh, four and change percent. Interesting, uh, depending on when you measure in March, a little lower. So I don't know, maybe, maybe uh, Jerome Powell will explain at his next meeting that, you know, they're, Marco, I hear the, the kids today, they call this an inflation deficit. So you shopped at a supermarket where your food prices might have been up like a little bit more than 0.1% last month? Yeah, uh, it is. It, it, when you can get what you want, uh, because uh, a, a lot of stuff, it's it, it's actually quite quite hard to get. And um, so, yeah, uh, 
it's it's uh, it's it's definitely not not pretty out there being a consumer. Yeah, although fortunately, as you can see here, Marco, um, <laughs> I mean, because I don't want to alarm anybody watching the show today. Good news: the core CPI <laughs> translation. We came up with another fraudulent metric to add to the other fraudulent metric, which excludes volatile food and energy costs, increased 0.3% monthly, and only 1.6% year over year. So, Marco, if you kind of pretend like you don't use any of the things you use and you yeah. know, make up some numbers, you can actually keep it under 2%, fortunately. Yeah, exactly. If you, if you exclude food, fuel, housing, and basically where 90% of your, uh, of your most important expenditures go, it's, uh, uh, it, it's not as high as 2%. Uh, that, that may be so, and, but, you know, I think for, for, the, average, uh, for the average citizen, uh, food, fuel, and housing are the most uh, important uh, uh, costs and, um, and and those are definitely not not going down. They're going up, and they're probably going going, going up substantially higher than those two percent. Yeah, although Marco, those are not included in the core CPI, so we can ignore that. Um, here's another one, perhaps um, you could comment on because I know there's this you know, debate about some people who cite empirical evidence rather than academic theories. So as someone who actually writes checks, you know, cause like you don't, I'm assuming your company doesn't just directly steal the stuff like the government. So you actually have to pay for the inputs of your goods. So while the inflation numbers, you know, they look high, many <laughs> economists, <laughs> I'd like to play poker against some of them, as well as policymakers at the Federal Reserve, it's just gonna be uh, temporary Reminds me of when Ben Bernanke uh, talked about those, how it was transitory. This is temporary. Uh, what, what's your expectation? Yeah, I mean, you, you know what they say. There's, uh, you know, there's no nothing more permanent than the temporary government measures. Um, yeah, I mean, we we are we have seen um, an unpre unprecedented. Uh, kind of suspension of economic activity over the last uh, 12 months around the world. Um, and uh, the amount of money printing is just mind staggering, mind blowing. And um, I mean, we, we are already seeing signs of inflation in a very, very uh, depressed uh, economy. Uh, now that people are, you know, getting back to work, uh, some of them, uh, the, the ones that still have a job, uh, and, uh, you know, there's some sense of normality and I, I think there will be a little bit of, uh, of, uh, you know, a, a kind of a rebound in economic activity. You have a lot more money uh, chasing the same amount of goods. And actually in many cases, um, a, a, a much smaller amount of goods, because there's a lot of factories that close, some businesses have cl closed permanently. So the supply of goods and services has kind of diminished. Uh, the amount of money has substantially increased. And as we get into this recovery, that much bigger supply of, of, of uh, that amount of money is going to be chasing a, a, a smaller uh, amount of goods and services. So I really don't see uh, how, how you can, um, how you, you won't be seeing inflation. Um, and uh, it's, it's, I think it's going to get scary. Uh, because uh, when, when people start feeling uh, that inflation uh, and uh, they feel that they can't keep up with it, um, I think you'll start to see social unrest as well, which, which I, I, well, you, you're already seeing it uh, quite a bit. And uh, I, I think it's going to tend to get worse because, uh, you know, the, the, the people uh, at the bottom uh, of of the social pyramid are going to be the one most affected by this uh, by inflation, and um, and and yeah, it's 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 not going to be pretty. Yeah, and I'll I'll take that a step further. You can see it, or uh, I think I've mentioned this before. I mean, the last couple months I've been you know I have a got a short term lease here in Austin, Texas. I've been thinking about where to go next, and as I watch the things I see day by day. 
I am 90% headed towards leaving the U.S. for the second time in my life. I didn't plan to come back the first time, and I'm not saying that to be funny or, or anything, but I, I think it's actually kind of sad that because it's largely in response to seeing basically all of the ideals that people look to or the, the reasons America was viewed as a, a leader or something positive or a place of opportunity, that's what's being abused the most. It's like, uh, it's like when I find evidence of, act, of illegal activity in the financial markets or elsewhere, it's like you, you tell the authorities they, and they act like offended that you're presenting the evidence to them. And um, anyway, you know, but I guess in the end, that's something I wonder, especially back to uh, how companies respond to this, because you hear, you know, the, the numbers are going up. They say it's temporary. Of course, April likely will also show a sharp rise, but then the numbers are supposed to decrease as the worst months of downfall. You know, they, I mean, we've been hearing that for uh, decades, almost a century now. Um, and then when it comes to how to pay for it, it's usually either printed money or I see Joe Biden was a headline that he is going to you know, they, they just callously like uh, he's going to grab two trillion in overseas profits. Going to grab it. What is he like playing softball? And it's like a line drive or something. I mean, I'll bet the. Uh, I mean, you have an international company, but if he grabs it from your company because you have maybe an employee employee in the U.S., the, what what is it? grab? I mean that that that's that's the kind of thing that to me gets business owners taking capital out of a country, or at least from what I've read historically, those policies people notice. Do you yeah. have any thoughts on that? No, absolutely. I think uh, it, it, it's it, you know it, it's really wishful thinking. You you, you know the. the People, you know, tend to just go for the easy solution. Oh, yeah, let's let's just, you know, let tax the rich. Um, you know, you know, in all fairness, that's that's uh, that's you know, fairer than than tax the working people. But you tax the rich, and they're gonna pick their money, and they're gonna move out uh, elsewhere. So, I, I think you know, politicians. Um, need to really think very carefully about uh, the moves they will be making because uh, their, their, their decisions might, uh, might actually have the, the reverse effect that they're intended to. And uh, actually, I've, I, I've read many cases of, uh, of policy, uh, you know, moving uh, income taxes up and down. And in, in many instances, actually, more often than not, decreasing taxes increases the tax revenue as opposed to uh, 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 decreasing it, which is kind of, uh, um, you know, goes against kind of like the first reaction common sense. Yeah, you increase the you know, you increase taxes, you know, tax revenue increases. But actually, in many cases, because of that kind of crowding out effect, uh, people think, you know what, uh, I, you know, I, I can't, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't, I don't want to do this anymore. And actually you, you see that even internally in the U S uh, you, you, you have a, a lot of people over the last, uh, you know, a few months, uh, or so moving, uh, from, for example, California going to, to Texas. Um, and you know, the differences in, in the tax are, you know, not that big, uh, but, you know, at, at the end of the year, those, you know, a few percentage points make a difference in people's finances and, uh, and uh, they, have to, they have to think what's best for themselves. Yeah, I can certainly understand that. It seems like, uh, at least according to this article, that Nancy Pelosi's husband was thinking about what was best for themselves. Although, Marco, I won't get you in trouble and you don't have to comment on any of this, but just would you like to be part of a moment of history? Because I solved the U.S. tax issue. And I'll just, you don't, you can comment if you'd like, you can pass if you want, but would you like to be here while I announce the solution? Yeah, I'm here. I'm yeah, listening. We can, we can pay for the latest bill. Here's a tax program that I think everybody could support. So why don't we raise taxes on congressmen or any political people that use their, abuse their power to front run bills and buy call options ahead of government contracts? 
I think that's something that anybody could support. I would think based on Nancy Pelosi, the things that she gets up and says on TV about weeding out corruption and all that, that I would assume she would be in favor of voting yes. I mean, that would be a good, it just seems like a fair area to tax that anybody could support, you know? I, you know, you, you got my support for this one. I like yeah. that. You, well, you can like extend, it can extend that to any politician. Yeah, well, uh, fortunately, I'm going to Washington uh, next Tuesday and uh, inviting a bunch of my few thousand of my friends and, and we'll make some signs. Uh, we're going to stop by the White House too. maybe we'll go by that Capitol building where they uh, the police remove the barricades so people could walk in a couple months ago and uh, maybe Nancy will be walking by and we could suggest that proposal. Um, I mean, if there's ever been something bipartisan agreement, you know, Democrats, Republicans, I mean, I can't imagine someone running for office would vote against a proposal like that. <laughs> but well, any if, if, if it reaches the floor, yeah. Yeah, well, uh, fortunately, I'll take some cameras with me and uh, we'll report back on that. But back to uh, enough the funny stuff, back to the gold market was probably sometime around here, uh, I'd say October, November, first time we had John. And in the midst of, you know, finally inflation, you know, like, I mean, finally we had a break in the inflation deficit the Fed was worried about. Yet over that period of time, we've seen gold go from over 2000 bucks, today sitting around 1750. Any thoughts on that and where we're headed next? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I think this is this is the bargain of the century, uh, to be quite quite honest. Um, like the setup for gold has never been better. This this is this is a unique moment in history, literally. Uh, and I so say for for gold and silver, I think uh, central banks have put us put themselves in a trap. Uh, governments are over indebted. Uh, they've expanded their balance sheets to the to the wazoo. Um, there, there's no way they can increase rates. Uh, you know, everyone is panicking if, you know, the, the U.S. 10-year yield is 1.6 or 1.7 or 1.8. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's... It, and Marco, if, if inflation is 2.5% and the uh, Ponzi scheme Fed propped up bond yield is like 1.7, does that mean that's a negative yield? That, that's definitely a negative yield. And I know I don't know any investor that is, uh, you know, unless he's forced to, uh, to invest in a losing, a guaranteed losing proposition. And that's, uh, and, and that's a big portion of the bond market these days. Well, and, well, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt Marco, but in all fairness, yeah. you know, Jeff Curry of Goldman Sachs. Yeah. You do? No. No. Oh, so, the, okay. I'm just pointing out, you, you said yeah. you don't know of anyone, but there. I think I yeah. know someone out there who may fit that category. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, please continue. Yeah. Well, uh, you you might. <laughs> I I'm not going to be following his advice. That's for sure. He's he's got some different perspectives on certain matters for sure. Um, although I have a question here. This one's interesting. Here in the bottom, we see the gold chart. This is just. 2021 goes from 1950 down 200 bucks. Now I've isolated the Fed's balance sheet over that same period of time where it went from 7.3 trillion to 7.7 .7 trillion. It looks small because the numbers get so big. Yes, just 500 billion, half a trillion. A drop in but, the bucket. <laughs> now I watched this clip once of Ben Bernanke saying he doesn't understand gold, doesn't know anybody who does either while he inflated the currency. But, you know, I have some weird hobbies. I read these history books. And I don't know if this is another conspiracy <laughs> theory I got suckered by, but at least I read these people who say that the dollar actually used to be a measure of gold. Like the whole point of it was that rather than having to carry your gold everywhere, it was put in a bank. I mean, there's these wild stories, uh, you know, like the historians talk about a gold standard and basically which lasted until the London gold pool imploded and Richard Nixon pr pr protected us from the speculators who are out driving the American goods up. So he removed us from the gold standard the last time that scheme imploded. 
Then they created the COMEX futures and the CFTC in the early 70s while inflation was raging to propagate that scheme. The CFTC has played their role as the dirty cop, which we'll address publicly next Tuesday ever since then. So, you know, and I hear all these guys say about how, you know, Silver Squeeze is a bunch of uh, keyboard thumpers. <laughs> Should meet this, this guy, Dick, from Australia and hear some of the things he says. But if, if the money supply is rapidly increasing, think about this. Actually, in just four months, let's put this one in perspective. So by my math, 0.5 divided by 7.3. So that's 6.8% increase in the Fed's balance sheet this year alone. Yet the price of gold is down $200. So what would you say to folks who, uh, you know, are wondering what to, to, to do with all of that? Well, you know, I, I know all the arguments about the, uh, uh, the, the price manipulation. Uh, for me, I, I just go straight to, to what's practical. Uh, you know, if they're manipulating the gold price and they're suppressing it in the same for silver, you know what? Thank you very much. I'm going to be buying it at discounts and I'm going to keep it for myself. I'll buy it physical. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll buy ETFs that are, have allocated golds. Uh, no, you know, no IOUs, no promises, no unallocated golds. Um, and I'll just take this opportunity, you know, thank you very much. Uh, I think that's, uh, you know, uh, thank you. Thank you for, for providing this, this discounts. Uh, yeah. And that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm, I'm adding to, to my gold position, uh, my physical gold position and my silver gold position. I'm adding to, uh, the, to Cassia as well, to, to the company. So, um, you know, this, I, I think this is, this is quite a, a, a unique moment in history. And, uh, I think people should be uh, very careful not to, not to leverage themselves, uh, because uh, the shocks can be violent, and um, and people that are you know you know everyone extends you margin until the moment that you need it, uh, and then they're gonna say it's because you know market disruption. They're gonna increase the margin requirements, and and then you get closed out. So um, yeah, so uh, it's. Uh, Wait, I'm sorry, you're talking doing. about the CFTC there or, uh, <laughs> raising margins, <laughs> stopping people out. Um, maybe you've every, heard every, everyone on the financial Goldman system. Sachs. <laughs> yeah, I think it's everyone. Uh, it's everyone. And, you, you know, and you already have uh, it's even in this crazy stock market, uh, you're already having, uh, you know, issues with, with funds and margin calls uh, and, um, and, you know, and, and everything, everything seems to be uh, you know, being inflated up. Um, so I, you know, I, I, I expect to be, you know, I expect to be a very, very bumpy road. So I think, uh, I think margin is dangerous. Uh, and uh, again, you know, physical, physical, uh, physical is king. Yeah, well, it makes a lot of sense to me. And I'm going to be fair. I'm going to give a disclaimer. I know there's a lot of, uh, especially Americans that are into the chasing momentum, buy high, sell low strategy, and I get it. I know I'm old fashioned with my fundamentals. So anyone, you know, that doesn't want to hear the, you know, the buy low thought process, uh, you can turn it off now. I mean, I don't want to <laughs> keep you. But for anyone that uh, is interested in what I heard as I've been doing the interviews and had to, you know, talk with people who made a lot of money in the financial markets. They all talk about buying when everybody else is panicking um, or perhaps, you know, getting long precious metals or companies that have exposure to precious metals during times when the currency is being hyperinflated, yet the price is down. I get it that, you know, maybe some days we like seeing the price go in our direction, but I don't know, having, I'd like to think I have a few credentials in my background as I've studied trading and gotten maybe some things right, gotten clobbered on others and hopefully learned yet. Maybe it doesn't, it's not really like the fundamentals. Maybe that part's easy to figure out, but having, it's like, you know, maybe, you know, it's great to go to the gym and exercise, but do you actually go there 
or do you read books about it? So when prices are down, do you sell in panic or do you buy and sit patiently and hold? So anyway, we'll dig into that for a second here. Um, anyone who's interested in that, because Marco, I'm going to be honest with you. I think you're doing a lot of things right, although I have a website tweak I may offer. Just a suggestion, you know, I don't want to put you on the spot here, but that's good. No, no, any feedback is good. You can just hear me out. <laughs> so, I mean, it's beautiful what you have here on Cassiar, but actually, you could save a couple bucks on the investor relations. What if you just posted the video of Jerome Powell's appearance on 60 Minutes as your home page? So that way, it's like you don't have to like you know leave anyone saying, "Oh, he's talking his book." Just just let, just put that on loop. So anyone who comes there, they like listen to Jerome Powell for two seconds. They'll be like, "Take my money, please, please, give me shares, anything." <laughs> Tungsten, I'll take it. Anything but dollars. No, that's that's a good idea. I'll I'll maybe uh, put it in the uh, why gold section. I, I mean. Would you agree that anyone in the gold and silver industry really, for being fair, would be, you know, at least think about sending Jerome Powell a Christmas present? I'm going to send the CFTC and the Fed. I'm, oh, there's my friend Brian London. I, nice to see. Uh, you're going to be at uh, New Orleans show this year, Marco? Yeah, I will. I will. Mm, very nice. Well, I'll be looking forward to meeting you in person. Uh, yeah. At least if they have not made it mandatory to have a microchip vaccine <laughs> to get back into the country. I would like to be there, but um, great to see you with Brian. And uh, yeah, and uh, it's, it's uh, enough about the Fed and all that stuff. It is also nice to see that you guys have followed up and can, can you perhaps provide an update on how things have gone since we last talked about that? Yeah. No, absolutely. Uh, things things are going really well. Um, yeah, so we uh, just just maybe as a as a as a bit of a background for 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 the listeners that might not know the story. So Castiar Gold is a is a Canadian explorer. Uh, we have our flagship asset located in uh, northern BC. Um, we have uh, control of an entire district. Uh, it's a, it's a fifty six thousand hectare land package. Uh, that's uh, that's 560 square kilometers, so it's it's roughly you know 25 by 25 kilometers, so it's a really long you know really large area, um, and has the potential for to, to host a multi-million ounce camp. Um, we already have one million ounce uh, uh, on the on the book. It's a 43101 resource, 1.43 grams per ton. It's a mm -hmm. close to surface, flat lying near surface, and that's just. It, that's just like a, a one kilometer by one kilometer area. We have a 15 kilometer perspective belt uh, that we have already successfully drilled last year and, and we'll continue to, to, to drill this year. This year is, is actually going to be uh, very focused around a high grade area. Uh, we have uh, on the southern part of our property, on, on the southern end of the 15 kilometer belt, um, we have a, a very high grade uh, area which is actually historically producing so we're going to be looking for uh, the continuation of those veins uh, and we're going to be drilling 15,000 meters this year uh, and continue to to increase and and upgrade our our gold inventory uh, that already stands at over a million ounces and uh, it's it's a very very exciting year um, we've been also uh, continually adding to the team uh, uh, just recently, a few weeks back, uh, um, Steve Ledwin was appointed as, as our chairman. Uh, Steve is the former president and CEO of IM Gold. Uh, it's a mid-tier gold producer from 2010 to, to, to um, until last year. Uh, we also uh, appointed uh, Steve Robertson to the board. He's, uh, he's a very successful uh, geologist, uh, uh, which uh, has uh, done great things in, in, in BC. Uh, he's awarded uh, the Schultz Award in 2016 for uh, the mine development at Red Chris. That's that's over 10 million ounces and kind of same amount of of uh, of copper equivalent as well. Uh, so it's a, it's a massive project um, among other projects. So you know we have a we have a growing, improving you know world class team, a great asset that just uh, uh, keep, keeps on, on on delivering, and we are still very very attractively valued. Um, 
it's uh, actually that market cap is incorrect. Our market cap right now is uh, 20, roughly $25 million Canadian. Uh, yeah, that's, that's from November. And we need to update that. Uh, so right now our share price is roughly at 45 cents. Um, and um, we have uh, over $5 million in the bank. So we're financed for this uh, drill, the, the drill campaign this summer. And, and uh, it's going to be a very exciting uh, summer because we'll, we'll start drilling in June, in early June. So, you know, roughly a month and a half away. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's going to be a very, very exciting uh, summer with lots of news flow uh, because we're going to be drilling uh, very high grade material. And uh, um, it's just a long strike, the veins that uh, we know they're there, uh, as well as looking for new veins. So it's uh, exciting times. Yeah, and Marco, we have a question that came in here. Actually, a couple of questions. Here's an interesting one that I do hear a lot. Um, do you have concern that as these governments are struggling, have you ever, do they take over mines? Uh, any thoughts on that? Is that something that's discussed in the industry or what, what should investors, I know a lot of them have that question, anything you can share there? It's, it's definitely a risk, uh, you know, uh, if, if you look at history and you look around the world, um, you, you see many instances of uh, national, nationalization. Uh, and uh, it, it's actually, it, many times it goes hand in hand with, uh, with, with hyperinflation. You see it in Zimbabwe, Venezuela. Uh, you, you see basically bad government policy followed by money printing, followed by nationalization. So it's kind of like, you know, digging, digging yourself a, a bigger and bigger uh, hole. But, you know, that, that's why it's also uh, very important to, uh, especially in these uh, times of trouble, uh, to be in safe jurisdictions with a long track records, with a you know a, a solid justice system that protects your 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 rights and your property. Uh, so you know, I, I, I and it, as an investor, I'm very comfortable with jurisdictions like Australia, Canada, uh, U.S., uh, Mexico to 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 a large extent. Um, but I, I I think you will see a lot of. Uh, uh, volatility and risk and in, in many cases some some countries will go down the easy route which is they're going to start nationalizing industries and uh, uh, you know if uh, if my predictions are right uh, you know they always go for for the you know the the stuff that is valuable oil gold um, so so yeah it's 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 something that investors should bear in mind um, it's um, you know, uh, but you know, as I said, like we we uh, we are quite comfortable. I am quite comfortable with with Canada as a jurisdiction, um, and I think we are very very lucky on that sense. But uh, I think uh, some there will be a few more than a few jurisdictions that will probably see see that kind of trouble over the coming years. Yeah, and it's uh, I'm glad you mentioned that because when I think about, I mean, there's you never know what a government's going to do. And I guess that's always going to be a risk and perhaps why yeah. diversifying even as great as any particular one project may be is probably some value in there. Yet, at least when I think about Canada, where one of the larger mining communities, that would be a darn risky place for a government to try and nationalize. I mean, especially on the silver side, yeah, go ahead and nationalize these mines, but then you're gonna then you're really gonna drive the silver price higher because there won't be anybody to go dig it out. Jerome Powell and Joe Biden aren't gonna go find gold and silver. And despite the public commentary that these central bankers make, we see they're buying gold. We see countries repatriating their gold. Why are the, why is why are these countries buying it? Why are they paying to have it returned there? Why is Russia why is Russia making deals outside of the dollar while they diversify the reserves and they buy gold. So, I mean, you can have as many American media and politician lie about it as you want. That doesn't uh, change any of the facts. So, um, Marco, we have a few more questions here. Uh, we'll take a couple more if you have a few more minutes. Absolutely. Uh, someone was asking about the share structure, uh, management purchases, uh, said how many shares has management 
bought in the open market. Again, please be careful. I don't I want you to keep your answers legal, whatever is phrased appropriately, but anything no, you no. can comment there. We, we need to, we, you know, insiders, uh, we need to, uh, we need to uh, report every transaction. Uh, quite a bit, to be honest. Uh, over the last, uh, over, over the last, well, since uh, at least over the last 10 months, I, I bought over 400,000 shares. Um, and uh, a bu you know, a bunch of warrants as well. Uh, I know insiders are buying. Uh, other, uh, you know, we but basically our insiders. I think already now we are over probably thirty five percent of of the company. Uh, so that's that's actually a very good sign to see, uh, uh, because you know it, it's great me telling you we have a great company with great prospects, but. Uh, yeah, that that gets a, a, a very different meaning when I'm actually putting my money where my mouth is, uh, and as well as the rest of the insiders in the company. Uh, and I think you know that speaks a lot for itself as well. You know, uh, words words usually come easier than actions. Yeah, and certainly quite a contrast to the Perth Mint, where in the process of making a fortune, uh, they basically call their customers a bunch of losers and act irritated uh, and. and it's also odd because they say anyone who thinks silver is going up is a complete fruit loop, I guess means they're selling shit to their customers. So I appreciate, uh, that's why again, I'm, I'm really nice. It's really nice to have you on here again, someone who actually uh, invests in his company rather than sell something when they're betting against it. Uh, question here from Fernando, is Mr. Sprott in Cassiar Gold, uh, have you met Eric, is he an investor? No, uh, not, not as of now, uh, not yet. Uh, but uh, I think he would be something that I would be delighted to have uh, on the share registry for sure. Well, let's say Eric was watching today and uh, what would you highlight to Eric or anyone who might be new to Cassiar? Again, we're not giving legal financial advice here, but yeah. what would you say is the most important thing someone should know? Oh, absolutely. So, uh, yeah, I think one one of the points you mentioned is uh, uh, that uh, you know we are in a very safe jurisdiction, uh, um, as I mentioned before. Um, we have existing infrastructure. Uh, actually, we have a very large land package. And people sometimes, when they think about uh, Northern BC, they think it's remote, it's expensive to work. But actually, we have a highway bisecting our property. We have multiple property access roads. We have a mill on sites. Uh, that is uh, permitted and uh, we have tailings um, we have a camp um, so we don't need helicopter rigging uh, so so yeah so we have you know a safe jurisdiction we are uh, we have all that existing infrastructure we are quite you are very attractively valued um, you know we have 25 million market cap five over five million in the bank we already have over a million ounces of gold you know the, the contained metal value at you know, a thousand seven hundred U.S. dollars as one point seven billion dollars just there, uh, and uh, you know we, we expect to find a lot more, and that's uh, that's what we're gonna you know that's what we were doing last year, and we will continue to do this year as well, and um, it's a it's a very attractive entry point, uh, and um, I think uh, uh, Mr. Sprott should have a proper look at what we have. Well, that sounds good. And actually, we're getting some great questions in here now. So um, Sarah Brown on fire mentions Mexico seems the safest government currently. Never thought I'd say that. I was thinking ironically, I mean, here it is like all I'm trying to find is a place where, you know, the whole market isn't completely corrupt. You can live without, you know, being herded like cattle and <laughs> currently seems like that's where I'm headed. So um, anyway, uh, Brian K says, has Marco thought about paying investors in silver rather than share dividends as an option? Uh, I've heard a lot of people ask about that. I know there's some logistics involved there, but Marco, is that something that could even be considered or have you ever thought about? Yeah, uh, actually there, there's companies that do that, uh, that they, there's gold producing companies that, uh, that pay dividends uh, in uh, in basically in coin equivalent. So usually they have a deal with the mint, uh, where the 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 investor can exchange his cash dividend uh, by equivalent uh, amount of of bullion. Uh, 
Um, so yeah, I think if we were ever, uh, uh, yeah, I think I think we would, would definitely, you know, I think that's that's definitely a great uh, a great idea. Uh, and I think you know, as an investor, I would you know rather get my 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 dividends in in uh, in um, in gold coins than or silver coins than uh, than in in, in fiat, <laughs> which uh, uh, it seems that uh, it's uh, it's definitely on a downtrend. Yeah, I'll say so, and I'll I'll go a step further, at least from my perspective. Any company that wants to get the greatest return on marketing investment in history. Give out some gold and silver dividends and uh, that'll get some attention going there. Uh, and let's see, uh, Sarah Brown says, what's the possibility of a miners co-op or miners auctions? Uh, I asked if she could give a little further clarity. I think I get what she's getting at there. Uh, can you comment on that at all? Or actually she says, can the miners auction their silver to achieve better price discovery uh, and that's actually something that will be part of my surprise announcement coming up later today. But Marco, what do you think about that? Yeah, it's, uh, that's actually a very interesting question. Um, I, I actually don't know the, the, the details uh, too much. Um, I, I know most gold producers, uh, you know, sell, sell, sell directly to, to the refiners. Um, but, uh, you know, th there's, there's, a, there's a lot of intermediation there. Uh, which uh, you know it, it made a lot of sense before, uh, but these days you know you 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 can maybe like by, bypass the middleman, bypass the exchanges, um, and um, yeah, I think I think that's actually it's something I I really never thought about, but I think it's a it's a good idea on, on surface for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, I think that's. Uh... Like a lot of things that, you know, we're all doing our different things and sometimes just taking a step back to think about it. And part of uh, today's announcement will be something we've created that more than anything will be creating an environment where people can discuss things, where it's rather than letting everybody get screwed by the COMEX. I mean, if, has there ever been a more useless middleman? These guys take a lot of money out of it. They distort the price. They get caught cheating. The regulators sit there and giggle and drink beers and watch the whole thing. Your business is affected. You have to figure out how to run a business while your price is being stolen. Yeah. There are people digging the stuff in the mines. I hear it's not the easiest thing to do day by day. They're getting screwed. Everybody's getting screwed while all these guys swearing their oaths and, and banks saying oh, we're going to treat our customers. And then when they get caught, you find out their customers are the ones they screw first. Yeah, no, I, 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 I see the problem. Uh, again, I think, you know, my very, very pragmatic solution is, you know, these guys are giving us an opportunity. Let's just hoard as much as we can. They're making it, they're providing a discount. Let's take advantage of them. Let's, let's hoard as much as we can. Don't go on leverage. Um, just, just hoard it up. And actually you, 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 there were a few instances in, in, in the past where you had companies actually stockpiling their gold because they were not happy with the price they were getting. So, you know what? You know, we can list. wait. We can wait. Yeah, and uh, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe workers are are happy to get paid in uh, in in bullion. Maybe suppliers are are happy to to get paid in bullion. And, and maybe you're just like, you know what? I don't need the U.S. dollar. And yeah, I'll that's take it. What what Russia is doing? <laughs> I'll take that a step further, sir, because uh, a lot of the sponsors we have, I've been recently mentioning to them. There's one company that gave us options on their company, <clears throat> and I've been mentioning to. Uh, I'll extend this to anyone who's come on the show. If they want to pay in stock or options rather than cash, sign me up. Yeah, that's absolutely. all I need. And. Yeah. Um, yeah, who knows? Maybe we'll, uh, you know, and you can tell your friends about the same thing too, about if they're paying it, some of these ideas you have that, of course, a complete conspiracy theory about paying in gold and silver using real money. But I don't know. It's like maybe uh, the good people start hanging on to the gold and silver. I have this fantasy. Maybe in like a couple of years, we can buy California after they're so bankrupt. You know, we'll just get a little chunk of it, you know, and we can have Freedomville there. 
anyone who wants to live like a normal person without being told what to do endlessly, uh, you know, we'll see how it goes. But in either case, Marco, sure appreciate you being here. And uh, perhaps if there are any uh, anything else you'd like to mention or tell folks how they can uh, check in, get more information, if they'd like to reach you or someone from the company, how they can do so. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, thanks again, Chris, for, for having me here. It's, it's always great to talk to you. Uh, yeah, regarding Cassiar Gold, um, you can find us, uh, you know, on the typical uh, media channels. The, our website is www.cassiargold.com. Uh, that's two S's. Um, we can find us on, on Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram. I don't think we have a TikTok account yet, but uh, if not, I'll, I'll, I'll be sure we, we create one as soon as possible. On well, YouTube as well, you have some videos there that uh, that uh, I think it's uh, it's worth worthwhile watching because uh, it's uh, you know it's an opportunity to know the the company a little bit better as well. Yeah, and here you can sign up on the mailing list. So, Fraco, especially if people if you find any silver while you're out there uh, with, out there digging, you know that can keep us posted there. So. Sure, appreciate you being here. Thank you for all of your insight. It's great to see you again. And again, it's it's really nice to see, you know, we don't have a crystal ball, but when people make their genuine attempt and actually do follow through on the things they're doing, in my experience covering this mining world, that's people I've met who have made a lot of money. They say that's what they look for first. So appreciate you setting a great example there. And we'll look forward to checking in with you again soon. Sounds good. Thank you very much, Chris.